with two former WWE stars potentially going to AEW and more. This is Wrestling Hub, my name is John, and you're watching The Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Giving his reason as to why the WWE Hall of Fame is not that special, Eric Bischoff said on his Strictly Business podcast, I enjoyed the Hall of Fames earlier, much more than I enjoy them now, because in a way, at least, my impression was that that night was more focused, and it was made to feel special. There were some issues along the way, I think having too many people take some fun out of it, making it less special and less entertaining in the long run for the people who have to sit through it, watch it, or sit out in the audience. It's just that everything has an ideal time. I think a three-hour Hall of Fame is not ideal, but that said, it did feel more special to me previously than it does now. It almost feels like, okay, let's check the Hall of Fame box because that's what we do. And it's so meaningful to speak for myself, man. I was very emotional up there, and it wasn't even a live crowd there. It was just me and production people and friends in the back, but for those, you watch some of these Hall of Fame speeches, and the emotion is so real. The most real thing in wrestling is the emotion that wrestling creates, and especially when it comes to somebody who spent their lifetime or the majority of their life dedicated to the sport. And to have that moment where your peers recognize you in front of friends, family, and a live audience, and it doesn't get any better. After John Cena was beat down by Bloodline members Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa, SmackDown went off the air as Montez Ford looked to take advantage and have a match against the C-Nation leader. Here's the clip. Revealing that he and Bubba Ray signed with WWE, Devon Dudley told PW Insider, We did sign Legends deals. It was a few months back, so I was very shocked when I saw reports that we had signed a Legends deal because it made it seem like we had signed it that day or that we had just signed it and we didn't. The Dudley boys will now be new action figures in video games. It's more merchandise. That, I'm happy to say, we did sign a Legends deal and we'll see what happens from there. With him retiring from in-ring action about five years ago, former WWE star Paul Burchill announced his return to action, saying, Well, I've got England in my mind. I'll do a little word association just to illustrate the depth between you and me. Gangrel, when it comes to England, you're Elton John. Me, I'm Jack the Ripper. 30th of September, Shoemaker Center, Ohio. The Vampire Warrior versus The Ripper. Teasing a return of the NWO, Kevin Nash said on his Click This podcast, We've had reunions and we've come back and we've worn the logo. I'm telling you one thing, if they're going to bring that Latino World Order back, there's a couple malcontents that I see on that WWE roster, Mr. Ziggler. Corbin, you think he likes being over there in NXT? Maybe put on a black and white t-shirt and have some fun. How about you there, Big Braun? I know you just got your neck fused, but you know, you want a home? I think you'd look nice, a big burly guy in an NWO shirt. I'll put a black suit on and then quit after three weeks of fans saying, what? What? F that. I ain't got time for this sh
Prior to SmackDown, LA Knight would be pulled from the show with Sean Ross App, a Fightful said. Originally, LA Knight was listed as being involved in tonight's contract signing. Knight was listed as a surprise to help John Cena. He was also internally listed as teaming with Cena in a dark match following the show. We're told this was not a Vince McMahon change, it was medical related. It was later added that Fightful is confirmed with WWE sources and those close to him that LA Knight tested positive for COVID just before SmackDown and had to leave the building. He was supposed to be involved in the main event segment, wishing him a speedy recovery. As Matt Riddle was shockingly cut by WWE, his ex-girlfriend reacted to this news, posting this video to X. So I just got um, a million text messages and a bunch of phone calls to go and look at what's on X. And um, WWE has released Matt Riddle and You don't understand that I will never get an apology. I will probably never get ownership. I will never get any type of recognition from this man for the trauma that he has put myself through and many of the women that I have spoken to. But why I wanted him to be released, because I don't think he was always this person. I think he had those underlining issues, but I think what gave him the courage to do what he was doing was the limelight and someone like that is dangerous in that limelight i think right now he can now focus on maybe trying to be a better father and a better person and honestly i'm just so fucking happy he literally got fucking released that is vindication for me, and I know there's a lot of other victims out there who are so happy just like I am. Yes! Riddle's fiance would respond to this writing, a new low even for you. Anyone that cries tears of joy for someone to lose their job, especially when they have five children they support, is an evil lowlife. You give this liar with a criminal record and alleged history of mental instability a reason to continue to be obsessive, it's insane. It would be comedic if it wasn't so disgusting. Your speculation is disgusting, and infatuation with trying to demonize someone for article hits is deplorable. It's fascinating how comfortable people just became with defamation. Following his release from WWE, Top Dollar said this regarding the future of his Hit Row stablemates writing, I could be wrong, but I think Hit Row is dead. I made the song, I made the catchphrases, whatever Brie and Tahuti do next, they gonna shine, they're stars. Maybe now that I'm gone, they'll actually be given a microphone. Clearly the reason we never got one was because of me. Despite this claim, Hit Row's Ashante, the Adonis MB Fab had a dark match after SmackDown where Cameron Grimes defeated Adonis. Speaking about Raw potentially no longer being on Monday night, Dave Meltzer revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio that there absolutely is talk of Raw moving off Monday, probably because they are getting destroyed by football this year. Ringside News added that it was noted that Raw might lose a lot of viewers if it gets moved off Mondays because it's an institution. Fans are programmed to start their week off with the red brand and they may not follow it to another day. WWE may also split the pro wrestling audience by moving Raw to Wednesdays, which may be one of Tony Khan's worst nightmares for AEW Dynamite. That could hurt AEW badly, and that could be their goal, Meltzer noted. NXT star Eichmann Jiro confirmed his release from WWE writing, Thank you, WWE and WWE Universe. I was there just three years. There were so many special memories and great friends. What's next? I will. Touching on former WWE star Mustafa Ali finding his way to AEW in the future, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio, Ali is 37, he kind of knows his time is running out. He knows he's good, but he never got the chance, but again, the fact he'll hard, 
You know, everyone on that roster will work hard. Yeah, Danielson likes him, and that's a plus. I think that's why I think that Ali is going to AEW, because Danielson has Tony Khan's ear. He's got a good shot, but again, they have so many guys that they do nothing with now. You don't want to add a bunch of guys. You don't want to add a bunch of guys over 40. While Dolph Ziggler does have a 90-day non-compete clause after being let go from WWE, Dave Meltzer mentioned this about AEW being interested in signing him. Vince McMahon never saw him in the way that other people saw him, although he did have a good career there, and he made a lot of money. You know, there's more guys like that. Ringside News added that Dave Meltzer later stated that it's going to be interesting to see what Tony Khan does with these guys. It was stated that Mustafa Ali and Dolph Ziggler are two guys that they will probably bring in to AEW. That also begs the question of how many former WWE guys that AEW needs at this point. Meltzer then said, I'll put it this way. The first week Dolph shows up in AEW, there's going to be a giant, giant pop. But you know, it doesn't maintain. What ideas do you have? And he's probably going to want to get paid a good amount of money. He's not going to do it cheap. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.